Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. Spring is in the air. If you can hear the birds singing, uh, starting to get warmer. Oh, it's nice. All right, so I got a good video for you today. Um, but first, let me say this. I'm doing well after my surgery. Um, you can see that there. I'm starting to play again, and I'm very thankful for that. And um, I want to take a second and thank you guys for your prayers and your messages. I really appreciate that. Um, thank you very much. Um, okay, so today's video is the top five mistakes that people make when trying to learn any song on any instrument, okay? Um, a couple years ago, I did some of these videos, and um, I've gotten a lot of subscribers since then, so I really want to do more um, of these type of videos because they're very helpful. Um, I know when I was starting out and stuff, um, I, I found a lot of help like that on the internet. So, um, number one. Okay, first let me just preface it by saying that musicians really live in a song, okay? Um, and what do I mean by that? As Okay, let's say you go to a concert. I don't care who you're going to go see, but you go to a concert. What do they play? Well, they play their album that's current, right? They play that. What else do they play? They play any and all of their old hits every time you go see them in concert, right? Am I right there? Yes. Okay. Could be 20, 30 years down the road. What are they playing? They're playing their current album and they're playing all of their top hits from 30 years ago or more, right? So, musicians live in a song. They play that song over and over and over for years. They don't and this is something with beginners I just never understand. I'm tired of that song. No, that doesn't. <laughs> that doesn't compute with me. Um, you can learn all sorts of techniques <clears throat> from songs, right? So I do understand maybe you don't like a particular song, but this is not a dislike thing. It's just there. They say, I'm bored with this song. No. Again, what did I say about the musicians that you go to see? What are they doing? What do you want them to play? You want them to play that big hit from 30 years ago and the big hit they had after it and the big hit they had 20 years ago. That's what you want them to play. Do you think they're tired of that song? Maybe just a little bit? They know that they need to play those. That's what people like. People get attached to songs, okay? So anyway... That being said, let's get into number one. The number one mistake people make when trying to learn a song on any instrument is they don't listen. Listen, listen, listen. Okay, so what you need to do before you ever touch an instrument um, is listen to the song. This should be a no-brainer, but people, I don't know what happens. They just forget common sense sometimes, okay? Go listen to the song until you can hum the melody. If you can hum the melody, or at least the chorus, then it's time for you to start learning the song, okay? And this may sound harsh, and I'm sorry if it does, but it's the truth, and I want you to succeed. I want to encourage you, okay? So what you need to do, get on good old YouTube, because it's all there, all right? Get on YouTube and listen to the song. Listen to it on a bunch of different instruments. Listen to bands play it, right? Listen to it played fast. Listen to it played slow. All that stuff, right? Until you can hum along that melody, all right? And that is it. Then it's time to grab your instrument, okay? Um, but don't grab it before that. If you do, you're just prematurely doing it. Now, the exception to this is if you're at a lesson. Okay, you're at a lesson with your teacher or me. Hey, you're at a lesson with me and you don't know the song that they're trying to teach you, okay, well, you don't have time right then during the lesson to listen to it. So they may play it for you a couple times, but they're not gonna spend a lot of time. They're not gonna waste your time and money on you listening to that song. So they might present the song to you and say, let's play through a little bit of it here. 
And um, then I want you to take it home and, and, and learn it. That's where listening comes in, okay? So that's the only little caveat there to that, okay? So number one is listen to the song. You know, they don't do that. That's the biggest mistake. Okay, number two, okay? Number two is they try to learn the entire song in one go. This is a big mistake, okay? So let's go back to ninth grade English class, all right? And you had to learn the big long poem, okay? You had to learn the poem and you had to memorize it and recite it. Or even now, you're trying to learn a Bible verse and it's really long. You're trying to uh, memorize it. Do you recite the entire thing over and over and over? No, you don't. You take little chunks and memorize little chunks, okay? That's what we're going to do, okay? And I don't know. Again, somehow there's a disconnect. <laughs> People forget that, like, with literature, that's how we do it. We do the same thing with music, chunks, okay? So don't make that mistake. Don't fall into that. Don't try to learn the whole song all at once, all right? <laughs> we're going to take it in sections. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got some Milo's tea here. So, <clears throat> okay. We're going to take it in sections. How long does this section need to be? Well, that depends on you, really. It might be just a couple measures long. <clears throat> and if you're learning by sheet music or tablature, it may be four measures long, let's say. If you're learning by ear, it may be one whole line of of uh, of lyric that you're going to learn the melody to, okay? Um, and again, your chunks may be smaller or bigger, depending on your level. My flag's trying to come in and get me with the wind here. Okay, so don't try to learn the whole song all at once, all right? This is a good tip. Let me fix my flag. <clears throat> we got to fix old glory there. All right, so that's a big mistake, all right? And here's another thing to go along with this, right? What is the part of a song that's the easiest thing for you to remember, okay? For most people, it's the chorus. What's the thing you remember when you're remembering that old song you used to love to hear on the radio or something growing up? Well, you remember the chorus. That, that comes to you first, okay? So maybe you want to start by learning the chorus because you've internalized that. You can internalize that much quicker usually than the rest of the song, okay? So maybe start with the chorus. And yes, if you're learning on tablature or sheet music, you don't have to start at the first little note. You could go down to the chorus and try to learn that first, especially if you've got that memorized, you know, in, internally. You've got it internalized. Okay, all right, so number three, the third biggest mistake is we gloss over the hard parts. We skip over them, okay? So this happens all the time. Every student I've worked with has went through this and it's just natural, okay? You're playing the song and they're going along and they're not going fast, but they're keeping their time. Their time is good. They're going along, they get to the hard section and boom, everything falls apart. There is no such thing as timing anymore and they excruciatingly painfully go through that section until they can get to the next section where they love it again and they can keep time. Okay, now, everyone goes through this and there's nothing wrong with that, but here's where we've got to get some work happening. You have got to get past that and I'll tell you how to do that, but you've got to get past that where you have to be able to play the song in time the entire way through the song. You have to, okay? So maybe you need to simplify that section. Now, if you're reliant completely on sheet music and tab, this might be more difficult to, to you. If you're an ear player, it's not going to be as difficult because you're just going to revert back to the absolute most basic melody to play it, and you're not going to add any extra notes. So that might be the first thing that you do. The second thing you do is you just don't want to do it. You don't want to put in the work. And you'll just fly through it and then oh you get to that section and i've seen players that are several years in that still do this and they've not overcome this yet so this is a big one you guys okay so how do we overcome it it's called drilling all right i have lots of videos on this i'm gonna do another refresher one on it that is more recent as well 
that you'll see in the next few days. Um, but drilling, okay, you need to do that. If you're on my website, search drilling. You, those videos will come up for you, okay? And um, so, yeah, we want to drill that section until we know it. It's just that simple. And I'm not saying play it at breakneck speed. You should be able to play the entire song at the same speed, right? Not one section at 100 beats per minute and one section at 50. No, that, that's no good, okay? So we want to avoid that. That's a big mistake, all right? Next, number four. Okay. Not spending enough time in the song, okay? At the beginning, I said we live in a song. We play it for many, many years. And this is true, okay? But I also get people who... Um, remember earlier I said, oh, they'll say I'm bored. No, this time, this, what I'm talking about here is they, uh, and this is much more recent. Uh, and I think it has to do with our media consumption and how we, um, don't have a good attention span anymore. Um, I think that is kind of spilling over into music as well. So, um, you need to spend enough time in the song, like they, you, they will just want a new song, 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 but they haven't learned the first one. They want 10 songs, 10 songs, and have not learned that first one yet. That makes no sense to me. You should not be doing that. If you are, stop it, <laughs> okay? That's a mistake. Spend some time in that song. Have two songs that you're working on at once, okay? Have two, two to three. You know, um... I don't understand this mentality of consume the next song, consume, 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 consume. I want the newest thing. Uh, no, really spend some time in the song and learn it. Uh, there's good value in learning all these songs. There's little techniques and things in each one that I, I try to do this, okay? In each lesson on my website, I try to give you a different technique. So I, might, I have like 200 beginner uh, lessons, okay? in each, you know, in banjo and in dulcimer. Uh, I have more than that actually, but I try to give in each lesson a little something a little bit different. Like on the banjo side of it, maybe we're putting just a little bit of a double thumb in here and this is still in the beginner level. Or maybe we're doing some uh, slides or uh, something a little bit up the neck, just a tad. Here, uh, little things, right? Now, my intermediate stuff, we're doing a lot of these things all at once. But same with the mountain dulcimer. I may be wanting to show you some alternate picking in this song, so I will emphasize that. Or the next song, I might want to show you how I like to do a bass heavy back strum. Or I might show you how I want to do a fingering for a specific chord, something like that. There's just all sorts of things that I'm trying to show you. In each thing okay so spend time in that song all right I didn't want to get too much off track there but spend time in that song now lastly number five oh that that should be my thumbnail right or there we go that's a good one okay number five is do not compare yourself with others this is a big mistake you guys okay and lots of people make it. And I fell into this trap as well when I was starting out. Um, but a lot of these things I'm trying to teach you is because I've been through it. And over all these years of teaching people and stuff, I've learned everyone's going through this stuff. And everyone does a lot of these things. So please, heed my advice here. Don't compare yourself with others. Your journey is not theirs. You don't know how long they're practicing versus how long you're practicing. You don't know how many people they play with on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. You don't know how much time they uh, can, uh, can spend doing these kind of things. And you don't know their past history of music. You don't know if they had just a natural sense of timing. Some people really do. Others really do not. Okay. And it's something they have to learn and spend more time at. So someone with um, timing issues may spend a lot more time really fundamentally learning timing, whereas someone who has that innate sense just breezes right through that section and goes on to the next thing. You don't know their journey, and you shouldn't compare yourself to them, okay? 
that's all I've got to say about that, really. People do this time and time again, and it's a mistake. Stop it. Don't compare yourself to others. Um, another thing, too. Uh, I don't know, you, know if you've noticed it or not, but in the claw hammer uh, banjo world and in the mountain dulcimer world, I'm completely different than most everybody else in the way I present it. And I do this because this is the way I would have liked to have learned. And I play differently. I play my instrument with other instruments, not dulcimers. I play my mountain dulcimer and my banjo with guitars every single Sunday and singing at church, okay? So every single Sunday, and we do it in the bluegrass style of play where we will sing a verse, have a break. Sing a verse, have a break. I say sing a verse, have a break. Sing, that's my messed up brain after all these drugs and time <clears throat> spent recovering. Anyway, what I meant there was we will sing a verse chorus, then do a break. Sing a verse chorus, then do a break. And so on and so forth. And we will pass around the breaks. And you will be playing chords and backing. And yes, there's some nice backing going on with um, fills and things like that happening. All right. So we're, we're kind of doing that in the what I would call the bluegrass style. And that's what I do 99% of the time. Okay. So that's how I'm presenting it to you. And you're not going to see a lot of claw hammer banjo that's done like this. Um, you'll see some of it, but really you won't see a lot. A lot of times you see claw hammer banjo where they're by themselves or where they're with a small group and they are just playing the melody. And they might vary the melody, but they're just playing the melody. No one is singing, okay? But in a band type setting, that's not what you see. You see people singing. You see breaks. You see all kinds of things like that. You see fills. So that's that's where I'm coming from, and that's what I'm presenting it to you as. Because I want, obviously, I want to show you how I do it. Because that's how I know how to do it, and that's how I love doing it. And so, the kind of the kind of thing that I that I show you is is uh, geared towards playing with other musicians. And I don't mean playing with a room full of banjos or a room full of dulcimers or anything like that. I mean playing with other instruments. I'll even do that on the mandolin. I'll take the mandolin uh, in to play the banjo and my dulcimer. Um, and the only reason why it's been completely dulcimer heavy the last six to eight months is because I couldn't play much banjo with my neck. Okay. Um, but I'm getting back to it and that banjo's coming out again. So anyway, I hope, I went off track there a little bit, but I hope you've gotten something out of this video and I hope you realize, hey, you know, I make this mistake or these four mistakes that she said or however many, I hope you really can internalize that and go, you know, I make this mistake. I'm going to, I'm going to change that. I'm going to start listening to that song and internalizing that melody before I ever pick up my instrument. Or I'm going to quit trying to do the whole entire song instead of breaking it down into chunks, okay? These things will help you. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this video, gotten something out of it. And before I go, I always want to remind you that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, y'all.